I think I got 169 reviews on Amazon. So the, that's pretty good. I, I feel like I've gotten a lot of LinkedIn messages from complete strangers that have told me that there's been a couple people that um, said, well, my, our daughters really love this book and they want it read to them every night before they go to bed. And that just kind of blows my mind, you know, considering that's something that I wrote. But um, there was another guy that had sent me a couple of pictures on LinkedIn that I got a kick out of. He really apparently liked the hard hat scene where <laughs> Drew takes his hard hat off and he will not listen to the book unless he has a bowl on his head like a hard hat. Bob actually is in the first book. I had the reason I wanted to do it was because I had some people message me on LinkedIn and they said, you know, you should get Bob his own book. I just kind of thought about it. I was like, well, that's a, that's a really good idea. So it kind of plays on the same theme of he's proud of what he does. He works, you know, he pumps for oil. He has a problem. He has a good friend that comes and helps him out. And uh, yeah, it talks about different things that oil and gas make. And like in this book, I mentioned that uh, oil and gas makes everything from cell phones to credit cards to rocket fuel, which are not things I mentioned in the previous book. Yeah. Or, you know, uh, medical PPE, <laughs> you know, that's yeah, one. exactly. <laughs> <laughs>Two weeks back in April, the top book in the children's short stories category on the worldwide global Amazon site was a pro oil and gas book written by a dad who works in the North Dakota oil patch. I was thrilled. The author of Oscar the Little Pumper is Lucas Wirtz from Plaza, North Dakota. And I was so happy to see someone from the industry take the initiative to tell the other side of the story. You know, the actual truth about the industry after we've experienced about three years of being told that the only acceptable discussion around fossil fuels to be had with our kids must be led by that little teenage truant climate scold Greta Thunberg. Lucas Wirtz is a facilities specialist for Marathon Oil with a little guy of his own. So Lucas wrote a book to tell the world, and especially kids, how important oil and gas are in our everyday lives but also how the people in the industry work hard to feed their families and keep society functioning for everybody else. Well, Lucas is back now with two more books, a book about Bob the Big Pumper and a coloring book about Bob and Oscar, those helpful pump jacks and their adventures. So I caught up with Lucas last week to talk about why he wrote two more pro-industry kids books and to ask him about the reception he's received from moms and dads who want to be able to read their kids something before bedtime that doesn't make them out to be the devil. Take a listen. The feedback from the people has been really good. Actually, I just checked it here the other day. I think I got 169 reviews on Amazon. So the, that's pretty good. I, I feel like I've gotten a lot of LinkedIn messages from complete strangers that have told me that there's been a couple people that, um, said, well, my, our daughters really love this book and they want it read to them every night before they go to bed. And that just kind of blows my mind, you know, considering that's something that I wrote. But um, there was another guy that had sent me a couple of pictures on LinkedIn that I got a kick out of. He really apparently liked the hard hat scene where <laughs> Drew takes his hard hat off and he will not listen to the book unless he has a bowl on his head, like a hard hat. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So I get a kick out of stuff like that. And I've got it's kind of some, it's kind of been shocking to me, like how many messages I've got over LinkedIn just on the book. Now, I know we talked about it before, but let's talk about it again. Why did you write this book? Because you're a dad, you work in the oil field. Mm -hmm. um, I know why I liked your book as a wife and mother um, of, you know, I've got a son who uh, works in a related industry and my husband works in the oil patch. So I know why I appreciated it, but why did you write the book? I wrote the book just because I felt like the world's kind of getting out of touch with how certain things really are. Just, you know, the way that oil and gas provides us with such a comfortable life from all the plastics and our cell phones and credit cards and things that people just don't even think about. And I know before I mentioned just being an electrician, you know, I'll think about like what it takes to wire a house or anything, but most people don't even think about flipping on the light switch in their kitchen. You know, it's somebody had to, you know, take the time to wire that. And I just thought by creating a book that'll educate the parents and the kids, it might create a little bit of a better world and more of an awareness, you know, that, hey, you know, where does all the stuff that we have actually come from and what all, you know, benefits, you know, do we get from oil and gas products? Really, it's basically everything. So. Well, and for I, me, for me, I thought it was great because our kids are so inundated with um, anti-oil and gas propaganda you know, mm -hmm. that, you know, the oil companies are the bad guys and the oil workers, they don't care about the earth. 
and there are no, you know, environmental regulations. It's just rape and pillage the earth. That's a lot of what our kids are exposed to both at school and on TV, on Netflix. And uh, for me, I was really grateful for, you know, a, a counterbalance to some of that, even though there's just so much of it. Yeah, I just, you know, I feel like uh, these big companies are kind of put in their own little box that, okay, because you do this, you're evil. But what they don't realize is that those big companies are made up of regular people like me and you that are just going to work every day and wanting to provide for our family. Yeah. Yeah. That's and pretty, like not every business is big and evil. It's not how it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, that's such a great point that businesses are simply made up by the people who work inside of them. And um, you know, when you are out in nature working in oil and gas, because so much of oil and gas is done far outside the big cities, particularly mm -hmm. here in Northern Alberta, you're really connected with the nature that the critics of oil and gas don't really see. Right. And I mean, if you're from there too, I mean, would you want to trash your home? I know I don't. I work in oil and gas every day. I, I grew up about 30 minutes away from where I work and I don't want to see this place turn into a slum fest or whatever, you know? So I feel like if anybody cares about this place, it's the people that are actually working. Them. Now, and I know it's the same. I know it's the same for you guys in your situation too. So. Yeah, I mean, we're so highly regulated. The environmental standards are so enormous, um, and mm -hmm. it, it, there's it's just something that the people who are critics of the industry don't understand how right. much work has to be done with regard to the environment before a shovel even hits the ground. Well, but then that doesn't fit into their narrative either. So that's probably why it's not talked about. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't want to know. They don't want to know. Right. Like you could take them out there and you can tell them um, you could take them to an oil lease and show them what has to happen. But they won't mm -hmm. come because they don't want to learn. Yep. Their confirmation bias has already made up their mind on you know what they're going to believe about it. And you can show them no matter what. So. <laughs> Now, I could talk to you about how terrible the environmentalist movement is all day, <laughs> but the reason I really wanted to talk to you is that um, you sort of trading on the success of your last book, you've written mm -hmm. two more books. One's a coloring book, which I think is phenomenal. And another one is a book called Bob the Big Pumper. And so yep. tell us a little bit about those books and, um, you know, how parents can uh, get their hands on those. Yeah, so Bob the Big Pumper, it's, it's basically... A similar story to Oscar, but basically I took lessons learned from making Oscar book because when you make your first book, it's not perfect. And there's not, a, I mean, there's things that I notice in there that the average person really isn't. I'm like, okay, well, I want to make it better this go around. So I made a book that was longer. Um, Bob actually is in the first book. I had, the reason I wanted to do it was because I had some people message me on LinkedIn and they said, you know, you should get Bob his own book. I just kind of thought about it. And I was like, well, that's a, that's a really good idea. So it kind of plays on the same theme of He's proud of what he does. He works, you know, he pumps for oil. He has a problem. He has a good friend that comes and helps him out. And uh, yeah, it talks about different things that oil and gas make. And like in this book, I mentioned that uh, oil and gas makes everything from cell phones to credit cards to rocket fuel, which are not things I mentioned in the previous book. Yeah. Or, you know, uh, medical PPE. <laughs> you know, that's yeah, one. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you also have a coloring book, which I thought was really great because, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if anybody has little kids, you know, not only do they want to read the book, but they also want to interact with the book. So what prompted that? Well, just after I got the Bob book written and I was just kind of thinking about the different scenes in there and just from the different messages I've gotten from people, they talked about, you know, different parts of the books that they really liked. I just thought, well, you know, maybe, maybe a coloring book would be the next step because I was kind of looking through Amazon and stuff. I mean, basically, from what I looked, there's there's nothing like that. And I thought, well, if there's all these oil and gas kids that really liked Oscar, maybe they'd like to color Oscar or his favorite scenes or same with Bob. So, I mean, it was pretty much like the week of uh, I released Bob. I started on the coloring book instantly. So. You know, it's so great. I don't want to take up too, too much of your time because I know you just got home from work and I know you have a little guy and uh, you need to be with your family. But um I just want to thank you for doing what you're doing to sort of break the mold and dispel the myths about the oil patch, including myths about the men and women who work in the oil patch. Because from what if you got all your news from the mainstream media, you guys are just a bunch of oafish buffoons who've never read a book, let alone written a couple. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Lucas, if you write another book, please let me know. I'd love to have you back on so that I can tell the world. Sure. Well, I appreciate it, Sheila. Thank you for your time. Now, Lucas has his own author page on Amazon if you'd like to check him out. He's even done a few other books unrelated to oil and gas. Now, Lucas told me off air that 
he actually likes reading comments and book reviews. And he's always looking for honest feedback. You know, the honest kind, not the, hey, I didn't actually read your book, but I'm a climate activist, so I don't like you or your book kind of feedback. I mean, come on. If you're somebody out there who gets upset about a children's book that depicts the oil patch in a positive light, but you're also one of those people who will probably never have children because you're so scared of climate change, you might not be all that stable. You know, a book about a cartoon pump jack might be the least of your problems. However, if you're someone out there who is trying to change the conversation around oil and gas, reach out to us. Reach out to me because I'd be happy to tell your story. Our children are being brainwashed in our schools, in pop culture, and constantly on social media. And if you're someone who is trying to provide them an alternative, that alternative being, you know, reality about the men and women who work in our oil patch and the job they do to care for the environment, well, I want the world to know about you and your work. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunreed. It's election time and you know what that means. It means the bailout media are the only ones allowed to ask Justin Trudeau or really, frankly, any politicians, any tough questions. But we're not the kind to ask permission before we do things. So Rebel News is out there trying to bring you the other side of the story as real reporters, not the kind who are undeclared press secretaries for Justin Trudeau riding around with him on his tour bus or on his airplane. If you'd like to support the work that we do, you can donate at realreporters.ca.